What's going on folks, it's your boy Devilian7 and today I bring you a topic that confuses people to this day or at the very least still has a bit of question marks here and there even for longtime fans such as myself. Nowadays Majima is a hot topic no matter where in the fan base you're at and different English communities and even Japanese ones. Majima's quote unquote transformation or descent to lunacy has always been a topic that no one could answer clearly and there has never really been one definite answer as to why he's left his stoic level-headed self that we see in Yakuza 0 behind in exchange of the unpredictable maniac that we see in later games. Be warned that this video contains spoilers from pretty much all the Yakuza games so if there's any entry you're planning to play and you don't want any spoilers, then I highly advise against watching this video until you've played those games. Now with that out of the way, Goro Majima made his first appearance in the original Yakuza 1, and at that point his popularity wasn't nearly as scorching as it is today. All we knew about him in that game is that he is a highly regarded acquaintance of Kazuma Kiryu, who could also be an unpredictable asshole to Kiryu, as we've seen when he kidnapped Haruka just for the sake of fighting him, and in the second fight in the game, ramming through a goddamn building with a truck just to draw out Kiryu again and have a rematch, and then he's never mentioned again afterwards in that same specific game. Simply put, he was there as a mere nuisance in the original Yakuza 1, and there was absolutely no background information about him whatsoever. But then again, as I said, it was his first appearance and it took him more than just one game to become as popular as he is nowadays which as a result of this current fame, Yakuza 0 happened, a canonical game where you play as Majima for the first time ever and explore his character in depth to see for yourself what turned him into the legend that is known as the Mad Dog of Shimano. It's crazy to think that all it took for him to have his own game was a popularity vote in Japan, which as you might have already figured, had Majima as the number one most popular character and the Yakuza series in Japan, surpassing even Kazuma Kiryu himself. That may not have been the only reason that led him to get his own game, but I think it's safe to say it was a major one at the very least. Getting back to the topic at hand, while Yakuza 0 was assuredly a major exploration point for Majima's character, it definitely is not the only entry that did that. We have Yakuza 4, which was the first game to reveal a plot point as major as introducing Majima's blood brother, Taiga Saijima. And then Yakuza 5 came along to re reveal to us that all this time, Majima is actually an ex-husband whose wife had an abortion and left him because her idol career was all about purity or something along those lines. But let's forget about all of that now and go back to the question we're all here for. Why did Majima choose to snap and leave behind his composed self that was prudent about his actions? I don't think the answer to this could have been made more clear if it wasn't for localization producer Scott Strickart, who in a recent AMA on Reddit was asked about Majima and his answer was as elaborate as it could get. Have a look at this. First, you need to understand Majima's primary motivation, Saijima. Ever since he missed participating in that hit, Majima's singular driving goal is to give Saijima the opportunity to confront him and exact whatever punishment he feels is appropriate. So Majima sets out from square minus one to get back into the Tojo clan and gain enough power and position to do that. But as you know, in Yakuza 0 he discovers that some costs are too great, which throws his entire life's purpose into question. How do I balance my own sense of right and wrong with the tenacity I must have in order to get back into the clan and to Saijima? That answer comes in the shape of three different dudes who give him three different answers to how one is tenacious. Lee, who would go to any length to protect the ones he loves. Nishitani, who throws his entire self into his pursuit of pleasure and even Sagawa, who as Majima tells him, is practically immortal. But what happens to his three paragons of tenacity? Well, you know that answer if you've played Yakuza 0. What happens when Majima attempts to take the moral high ground? What happens when he dares to show some modicum of emotion? At the end of Yakuza 0, contrary to popular belief that he goes insane, the bombshell reveal is that Majima tells you that he's going to flip a switch, live crazier than anyone by adopting a new persona, you literally see this switch getting flipped in the post credit scene with Kiryu. Between Yakuza 0 and Kiwami, some more shit happens to Majima. His wife gets an abortion without his knowledge. He respects, I mean, he hits her and he leaves her. And the evidence of Majima's mindset in Kiwami is right in the first few lines when you meet him. 
What's the point of doing the right thing? Doing things that way is going to break you. But no, that's just a projection. Majima is the one who got broken. And if you've played Yakuza 2 through Yakuza 5, you see the facade slowly start to fade away. It's a really interesting growth of the character, and I couldn't agree more. Now, before I say anything regarding this, do keep in mind that Scott clearly mentioned that only some of what he said was confirmed by the writers, not every bit of it. So, some of it is his own interpretation, but I don't think we've gotten an interpretation that's any better than this one. Think about each of these paragraphs. Each of them makes a lot of sense, especially that one point about paragons of tenacity. Try thinking back of when Majima defeated Awano and had an exchange with him about how he isn't as dumb or reckless as Awano had initially thought. Majima will mention that he met people who lived like idiots and died like idiots followed by flashbacks of both Lee's and Nishitani's deaths, where afterwards Majima says that their climactic lifestyles made them some of the finest bastards that he's ever known. And upon hearing that, you'll most likely be confused as to what exactly he's talking about, because he doesn't mention the exact traits that made these two special to him. And as a result, people would just go through the epilogue shrugging off the significance of these two characters as well as Sagawa's. I never expected the elaboration for Majima's adopting a new persona at the end of Zero to be anywhere near as profound as Scott had theorized. My personal explanation of it uh, wasn't exactly something very clear, as I thought that he simply has had enough of being caged for so long, and now as a means of exploiting his newfound freedom, he basically chooses to let loose and live a crazier life with less care than before. And on top of that, who would have thought that most, if not all of Majima's character development goes back to one major catalyst, Taiga Saijima. And there you have it, that's probably the most accurate explanation of Majima's transformation that we'll ever get. Shout out to Scott, Sam and all the other awesome guys behind the localization. You guys are doing an amazing job with not only the pleasant to read translations, but also spreading the love that this franchise deserves. And this video would not have been possible without the amazing analysis provided by Scott. So thank you. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed reading up more on Majima's character, and I'll see you next time.